morning, squad. Happy hump day. Welcome back to Mad Mizzy Sports Morning Show. The number one spot for everything sports news, sports talk, sports debate in the morning. And we got a crazy rundown today. Since we're a quarter of the way through the NFL season with week four passing by and week five coming up, I got to break down my quarterly awards and who I got is the best division, the best team in each division a quarter of the way through the season. Then we're going to move on to where is the best landing spot for Odell once he gets healthy? I feel like there's a few out there, but there's one specific one I feel like he'll fit in perfectly. Then let's move on to Aaron Judge and his historic night. The second to last game of the regular season, and my guy breaks this, the single season AL home run record. Congratulations to Aaron Judge. And I'm going to touch on, is he the true home run king over Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, and my boy, Barry Bonds? But to end it off, I got to end it off with Zion Williamson getting back on the court. Is he the most exciting player returning to the basketball court this, this NBA season? We got to touch on that. Let's get into it. Now, since we're a quarter of the way through the NFL season, we kind of got a feel for every team in each division. We kind of got a feel for every player. And I feel like the awards part is going to drastically change. But the best team in each division is probably not going to really change too much unless major injuries happen or major trades happen, which I probably don't see happening this year. So let's get right into it. We're going to start on the AFC. We're going to start at the AFC East. To me, the best team in the AFC East is the Buffalo Bills. Uh, just top to bottom, the best team. I feel like the Miami Dolphins got away with a couple fluke wins. They haven't been consistent, and I just like the way that Josh Allen has come out this season. Then moving on to the AFC West, I got the Kansas City Chiefs as the best team in that division. We were looking at this division as it being a historically great division. They have been historically disappointing this year, but when it look when you look at the teams that we relied on, of course it's going to be disappointing. We're relying on the o the Las Vegas Raiders, who've been disappointing since. I, who, who knows when they've been disappointing forever they get a new revamped offense now they got a good win last week but they've been very disappointing thus far you look at the los angeles chargers they've been everybody's darling cinderella super bowl pick since ladanian tomlinson and philip rivers look at justin herbert austin eckler and keenan allen now it's still the same old thing and they still come out and disappoint and then you look at the denver broncos yes they're they're what three and one but or two and two but they could easily be 1-3, and 0-4. Oh <laughs> I do not like what I'm seeing from the Denver Broncos. So, yeah, to me, the Kansas City Chiefs, the AFC West, AFC North, I still got the Baltimore Ravens top to bottom, just the best team. They should be 4-0 and oh right now, giving up two 17-plus point leads in the second half of games and their two losses. So, to me, they should be undefeated. They will get those things corrected. Lamar Jackson will continue to... Keep the pedal to the metal in the second quarter i mean in the second half as opposed to kind of letting off and giving teams a chance to come back so they'll get that situated they're the best team in the afc north let's go to the afc south last week yeah last week we were high on the jacksonville jaguars i'm still super high on the jacksonville jaguars but i'm gonna say the tennessee titans are the best team in the afc south simply because of experience and king henry i don't i'm a king henry dude you feel what i'm saying like before like when they had demarco murray then i forgot who they who else they had but when they used to split carries with king henry i used to be that dude like why are they splitting carries like why are, unless he's tired why are y'all one drive for king henry one drive for demarco murray why Get that ball to the 6'4", 250-pound monster back there 40 times a game. You dig what I'm saying? So for me, I'm going to still rock with the Tennessee Titans and their experience in winning games, especially with Jacksonville being so young. But that might change next year. But I still like the Tennessee Titans so far this year. Let's move over to the NFC, NFC East. Now, to start off, to, like before, before the season started, we had a Family Blitz episode where we broke down our predictions for each division going into the um into the regular season and I had the Cowboys as the best team in the NFC East but that was because I felt like Dak Prescott was going to be a more consistent MVP candidate this dude hasn't even been on the field and the one game he was on the field he stunk it up you feel what I'm saying so I'm gonna rock with the Philadelphia Eagles as the best team in the NFC East and the best team in the NFL right now top to bottom you think about that D line being resembling that Super Bowl run defensive line you still got Fletcher Cox you still got Brandon Graham then you got big play Darius Slay in the backfield that I like what they're doing defensively. Then you think about offensively. I freaking love Jalen Hurts. The way his composure, his confidence, the way he carries himself. The one thing that I kind of didn't like about him was his energy and how he just seemed to not really care. But it's him being even killed no matter if he's up or he's down. Like, I, I, I absolutely love it. Um, 
yeah, to me, it's the Philadelphia Eagles. But shout out to the New York Giants, man. They are looking very, very well and didn't even have a quarterback last week. That was a good one. Brian Dayball is turning them around real soon. Let's move on to the NFC West. For me, the NFC West is ran by my San Francisco 49ers. The way we look top to bottom offensively, you got Jimmy Garoppolo. We know what we're going to get. We know he's going to get the ball out. He's going to get the ball to George Kittle. He's going to get the ball to Debo Samuels, which is not a bad idea. You look at our special teams. Our special teams is getting a lot better with Ray Ray McLeod being a return man, an explosive return man. You look at our defense hasn't given up 20 points this season thus far, so it's the best defense in the NFL. The only question with my San Francisco 49ers is where I started it off with. Is Jimmy Garoppolo his up and down play? Regardless, if he was a consistent, even kill dude that, all right, you know he's not going to throw the ball, the game away. All right, he doesn't have the strongest arm or this, that, the third. But he's not going to throw fadeaway passes off his back foot. He's not going to throw the ball away. He's not going to get injured all the time. But he does do those things. And it is a long season. And we don't know who the backup is. You get what I'm saying? But if we stay healthy and Jimmy doesn't give the ball away and doesn't give teams just opportunities, you look at, I don't, I'm not fearing the Seahawks. The Rams, they don't look anything like the Super Bowl champs, and we've dominated them the past three, four years anyway, so I'm not concerned with the Rams. And then you look at the, the Arizona Cardinals. I'm not concerned with the Cardinals until they get DeAndre Hopkins back, and then they got to show that they can play in the second half of the season the same way they start the season off. So for me, it's definitely my San Francisco 49ers out west, baby. Let's go to the NFC North. To me, it's still the Green Bay Packers. I just cannot trust Kirk Cousins. Plain and simple. Uh, I look at uh, Christian Watkins. I look at Dobbs, <laughs> the wide receiver, the rookie uh, wide receiver Dobbs. He's going to get better. They're going to get more continuity, and their defense is just playing good. But like I said, it's just, I mean, when it comes to the, the NFC North, somebody has to show me that they can beat Aaron Rodgers and snatch that division crown away before I just say, yeah, he's going to lose it or hand it over. Nah, I ain't going to say that. And then let's go to the NFC South. Of course, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, that NFC South is just putrid. You look at the, the Carolina Panthers, them going out, getting Baker Mayfield has been an absolute disaster of a, an of an and experiment thus far but with that being said they are they do have a talented roster so going into the draft next year they better get one of those young hot quarterbacks but for me it's still of course the Tampa Bay Buccaneers when you look at Tom Brady Leonard Fournette um Mike Evans Chris Godwin then the defense Peter Vea these dudes are out there Antoine Winfield Jr I think they'll get it turned back around and then of course in that NFC you never know and you got the the GOAT quarterback so as long as they can Stitch it back up and get some type of continuity. They're going to be scary coming into the play. Also, yeah, look out for those Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Don't, don't, don't jump ship just yet. Don't jump ship just yet. Let's move on to my awards. For me, thus far throughout the first quarter of the season, the MVP has got to be Jalen Hurts. When you look at four rushing touchdowns, four four passing touchdowns, two interceptions, uh, eleven hundred and twenty passing yards, he's just shredding defenses, running the ball, throwing the ball, picking them apart, um, coming back. He's amazing, and, I, and like I said, I love his confidence, and I love the way he, he views the game, and he views life in general. If you put the work in, you shouldn't make it more than what it is. You should be able to do what you do if you put the work in. Have the confidence in you executing what you've been working your whole life for. I love that mentality. Absolutely love it, man. Let's go on to the defensive player of the year. We're going to stay in the NFC East. Micah Parsons. I mean, need I say more? Dude is just amazing right now if i had to have a backup or a 1a and 1b it would be michael parsons and then nikki bosa you got to give nikki bosa some props you look at him he's top two in sacks he's leading the league in pressure rate he's just amazing the dude is a beast out there but i got to give it to michael parsons right now because of where he's at sack wise and the impact he's having on on possibly i mean i said we got the best defense but the cowboys are up there as well so it's neck and neck but i think michael right now is probably leading away as defensive player of the year and for me the head coach of the year it got to be Nick Cerrone of the, the, the Philadelphia Eagles I'm staying in the NFC East when the Eagles hired Nick Sirianni I was like who is Bull and then it, was, it came back that Frank Wright signed off on him and you look at him he's been an absolute beautiful fit for Jalen Hurts and what they're trying to do with him only undefeated team left in the NFL they beat top competition if you ask me you think about Jacksonville they came in like a bus all you feel me? You think about Detroit. Now they can't stop a nosebleed, so I can't. I ain't even gonna give Detroit no, 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 no barons and all that. But I, I really look at the way that the Philadelphia Eagles have beat, and then you think about Minnesota Vikings. They have beat some teams that have gone out there and proven that they're they are gonna be tough out. So 
kudos to the Philadelphia Eagles. And yeah, I, I think Nick Sirianni is so far the <laughs> heck the coach of the year, and Jalen Hurts is the MVP so far. But let's move on into Odell Beckham. They're saying he's about six to eight weeks away from returning and being able to officially help a team. So where would he best fit at in at the end of the year with a specific team? I'm hearing the Packers. I'm hearing the Chiefs. Of course, we're hearing his old team, the Rams. We're hearing Giants. We're hearing a uh, we're hearing a reunion with the Giants. But for me, the best fit would be in Kansas City with Patrick Mahomes, with Travis Kelsey, with uh, Isaiah Pacheco, with um, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, with all those weapons out there. Then you still got Juju Smith Schuster. You, your defense is playing lights out. It's just the way that Patrick Mahomes is playing, he doesn't have to come in. He doesn't have to be the number one wide receiver. He doesn't have to be the number one target. I feel like if he goes to now, like Los Angeles would be a good fit as well. So I would say Los Angeles because he doesn't have to come in and be the number one wide receiver. But I don't think him coming into Green Bay or going back to New York and becoming a number one wide receiver would bode well. I don't think he has that in him anymore. I think he's a very good number two, number three receiver. So to me, I would see Kansas City or Los Angeles Rams, but y'all know I'm gonna say Kansas City. I ain't, I ain't even scared of Odell at all, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know, I wanna see Patrick Mahomes with uh, some somebody with a little juice in him, you feel what I'm saying? And I think Odell still has a little bit juice in him. Let's move on though, let's move off of the NFL, let's move into a historic night in Major League Baseball and MLB with Aaron Judge breaking the single season home run record in the AL held by Roger Maris in which he was sharing with Roger Maris, of course, right before he broke it, hitting, six, hitting home run 62. You, you talk about uh, pushing the envelope, you feel what I'm saying? Second to last game, my man said, okay, I got y'all, we, we broke the record, you feel what I'm saying? What a relief, congratulations to Aaron Judge. Is he the home run king even over those dudes and the NL that put up huge numbers, the Mark McGuire's, the Sammy Sosa's, my guy, the Barry Bonds of the world. I would say yes. I love Barry Bonds and I remember him chasing down 73. I remember how they would pitch around him. I remember like anytime the dude would get contact with the ball damn near, the shit was flying out the, 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 the uh, park. You feel what I'm saying? So for me, I would probably still say that Barry Bonds is the home run champion, but it's hard to say that he would have done that without the assistance of anabolic steroids. I mean, I definitely think Aaron Judge is the home run king over Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa, two dudes that probably wouldn't have been in Major League Baseball had it not been for the steroids. But to say that he's over Barry Bonds, I would have to say that just because he's doing it with no questions. With no questions, with no black marks, none of that. But the way that Barry Bonds was hitting that ball that year was a sight to see was a sight to see because it wasn't just his power it was the skill that came with it it was the chess match that came with it it, it, it was amazing and then he carried them to the uh the world series that year so it was just amazing to watch barry bonds that year but congratulations to aaron judge and i would say that he's the official home run king over anybody that has any steroid allegations that's just my opinion let's move on to the nba zion williamson finally hit the court again last night good thing to see you back well not a good thing Good to see you back on the court, Zion Williamson. But is Zion the most exciting player coming back this year? We got, like I said, we got Dame coming back. We got Ben Simmons coming back. We got Kaquad Leonard coming back. You feel what I'm saying? We got a lot of exciting players coming back. But I would have to say that Zion Williamson has to be the most exciting coming back because we haven't seen him in an entire year. And coming out of college and coming out of Duke, he was supposed to be LeBron James 2.0. You know what I'm saying? Super athletic just built like a, a freight train can't be stopped if he's going to the rim and we haven't seen him enough you get what i'm saying like he did look slimmer i like that he did look a lot slimmer he looked a, he looked very athletic so yeah he's going to be the most exciting player to look out for when you think about coming back cj mccullum brandon ingram that team is stacked you got willie uh willie green out there coaching them so it's going to be very very interesting to see how that pans out with them being what i think they finished off being the eight seed seven seed seven eight seed last year or no the eight or nine ten seed seed and they got in a play-in tournament whatever the case may be they really turned it around last year when they got cj mccullum then you got brandon ingram now you're bringing back zion williamson it's going to be exciting to see, and yes, Zion Williamson is going to be the most exciting player returning next year. Kawhi's probably the best. Dame's probably uh, the most popular, but Zion is going to be the most exciting. Let me know what y'all think, though. Episode 26, Man Music Sports Morning Show. Happy Hump Day. Mizzy World Entertainment.
like comment share subscribe listen alert gang